Welcome to worship with First Presbyterian Church in Battle Creek, Michigan. Today is the fourth Sunday in the season of Advent. This is a time of preparing our hearts and also being mindful of the constant presence of Christ through the Holy Spirit now and also God's reign that will be forever and ever. So till Christ returns or calls us home, we are Advent people waiting. Our Advent sermon series, Songs of the Season, is being brought to us by Reverend Dr. John Best and will include today and conclude with our 7 p.m. Christmas Eve service. You will find that the usual ways. We thank John for his messages and the continuity that he's provided this month. On December 21st at 5.30 p.m., a unique service for the longest night will be available on Facebook and YouTube. This brief time of reflection is a focused time of lament, of remembrance, of hope. It's especially appropriate for those who have lost loved ones and or we who struggle with grief, depression, and anxiety, which has been especially ac uh, accentuated by the COVID isolation this year. So join me Monday night at 5.30. Let's worship our God of promise, our God of hope. Our call to worship is based on verses found in Romans 13. You know what time it is? how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Come, let us worship God. Won't you join us in your hymnals? Number 100, My Soul Cries Out with a Joyful Shout. Oh, 
watch and wait for Christ's coming. We light candles of hope, peace, joy, and love, remembering the promises of God with prayer. We light this candle in hope. We light the candle. We light this candle for peace. We light the candle. We light this candle in joy. We light the candle. We light this candle with love. We light this candle. Psalm 89 verses 1 and 2 says, I will sing of the Lord's unfailing love forever. Young and old will hear of the Lord's faithfulness. The Lord's unfailing love will last forever. The Lord's faithfulness is as enduring as the heavens. Let's pray. God of hope, God of peace, God of joy, God of love. You are love, and those who abide in love abide in you. Teach us how to love one another as reflections of your light in the world. God of promise, God of love, into our darkness come. Amen. Won't you join us? Hymn number 85, Light One Candle to Watch for Messiah. Testament text is Hannah's song from 1 Samuel chapter 2 verses 1 to 8. Hannah prayed and said, My heart exalts in the Lord. My strength is exalted in my God. My mouth derides my enemies because I rejoice in my victory. There is no holy one like the Lord. No one beside you. There is no rock like our God. Talk no more so very proudly. Let not arrogance come from your mouth, for the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bows of the mighty are broken, but the feeble gird on strength. Those who were full have hired themselves out for bread, but those who were hungry are fat with spoil. The barren has borne seven, but she who has many children is forlorn. The Lord kills and brings to life. He brings down to Sheol and raises up. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low, he also exalts. He raises up the poor from the dust. He lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes and inherit a seat of honor. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and on them he has set the world. He will guard the feet of his faithful ones, but the wicked ones shall be cut off in darkness. For not by might does one prevail. The Lord, his adversaries, shall be shattered. 
The Most High will thunder in heaven. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give strength to his king and exalt the power of his anointed one. Holy words, holy wisdom. Thanks be to God. Gabriel's message that she would conceive and bear a son. Mary responds, here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. She then sings this song. Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. That coming to us from the Gospel of Luke, the first chapter, verses 46 through 55. This song did not just happen to pop up into Mary's head. With the help, I think, of, Go of Luke, the Gospel, the gospel writer, she draws from the song of Hannah in the second chapter of 1 Samuel. When, she find, when Hannah had been barren for a long time, and when she finally gave birth to Samuel, her son, in her later years, she dedicated him to the Lord by giving him into the hands of Eli, a, a holy man, to raise him in the ways of the Lord. And it was Samuel who would later anoint the first kings of Israel, first Saul and then David. Hannah gave Mary her opening lines. Hannah sings, my heart exalts in the Lord, my strength is exalted in my God. Mary sings, my soul doth magnify the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Hannah sings, Talk no more so very proudly. Let not arrogance come from your mouth. Referring, I, I think, to the village gossips who spoke among themselves about her barrenness. Mary sings, God has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations shall call me blessed. God has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. Hannah sings, the Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low, he also exalts. God raises up the poor from the dust, lifts the needy from the ashes to make them sit with princes and inherit the seat of honor. Mary sings, God has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly and has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. So Mary's song is not some flash of inspiration, but draws from the deep, deep well of scripture. She gives in the song a glimpse into the future reign of her son.
Mary sings, God has brought down the powerful from their thrones. Now, Herod was the local king of the area at that time. And Herod had built the temple in Jerusalem in, to honor God. He had also built the Colosseum Theater in Caesarea to honor the emperor Caesar. And he had built a massive mountaintop fortress in Masada to honor and protect himself. He had, you see, all bases covered. This powerful, ruthless king, however, would forever be remembered for his lust for power, for his paranoia, for his slaughter of the insolent, in, innocent children to secure his power once he heard that Jesus of Jesus' birth, of which, Jesus, of, Mary, of which Mary sang. Mary sings, God has brought down the powerful from their thrones. Power is not a bad thing. It can be used for the good as well for the bad. People with power sometimes, maybe often, think that they are accountable to no one. But Mr. President, meet Mary. God has brought down the powerful from their thrones. He has lifted up the lowly. One Advent, I went into Manhattan to visit a church member in the hospital there. And as I was Christmas shopping, as it was Christmas shopping season, I took the opportunity to window shop and walk through Manhattan's stores. I found Tiffany's, went to Nip Tiffany's on Fifth Avenue. Now remember, I grew up in the Pennsylvania small villages of Brogue and Dry Run. This was a cross-cultural experience for me at the time. I, and I noticed that in Tiffany, the, the, lists, the, the store lists no prices for their items, and everything seemed to be behind counters. It's like shopping for a Mercedes-Benz. If you have to ask what the maintenance fees and costs are, you probably shouldn't be shopping or asking. And I, I looked down at my 25-year-old, now 35-year-old J.C. Penney's overcoat, and I moved on. I went on to Saks on Fifth Avenue, and the prices there at least were listed. And there you could actually touch the merchandise. And I found one man's evening robe quite nice to the touch. It was wonderfully soft and smooth. And when I saw the price tag, $895, that was some 15 years ago, who in their right mind would pay that much for a robe? Christmas shoppers meet Mary. Mary sings, he lifted up the lowly and filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. God seems to smile when rules and policies and charities support the poor and frowns when the rich greedily stack the deck for their benefits. God desires that working people get a living wage, it would seem, and that all people have access to medical care, not just the privileged few. God requires it, and or surely the rich will be sent away empty. So Congress, legislatures, county commissioners, city council people meet Mary. Then there are the compensation packages of the CEOs and elite professional athletes. Now I'm a Detroit Lions fan, 
And Matthew Stafford, their quarterback of the Detroit Lions, got a couple of years ago a five-year contract worth $135 million, $27 million annually. He became, when he signed that contract, the, 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 the highest paid quarterback for a week or so. And when his friend Matt Ryan from the Atlanta Falcons received a $30 million annual contract, only to be surpassed by Aaron Rodgers of the Green Bay Packers across the lake, who earned at $33 million per year, $100 million guaranteed. I did some figuring on Aaron Rodgers' tax savings on the new federal tax savings plan. And if you do the math, his tax savings at the 37% rate compared to the previous 39.6% rate on, a, on his salary turns out to be a savings of $858,000. Not his tax, but the savings. It would take, I figured, a pastor working a full time, full time in this presbytery at the minimum terms of call, 19 to 20 years to earn what Aaron Rodgers earns, saved on his taxes in that one year. So CEOs, NFL superstars, meet Mary. He lifted up the lowly and filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. Biblical scholar Sharon Ring notes in her commentary that a leveling rather than a reversal is in view here as God's action moves us to a common middle ground. As an economy marked by competition is replaced by an economy of generosity in which all have enough. In other words, a prideful world where a winner takes all is transformed into one in which all have a place at the table. This is Luke's vision for the world and of God's salva salvation work. The humiliated are restored to their rightful place and the prideful must make way for others. The question is, how do we experience that kind of transformation? Theologian Wendy Farley highlights the importance of finding a balance point between pride and humiliation. When by the power of God's spirit at work in our lives, we are unhooked from pathologies of selfishness and self-negation. We discover that we are capable of being compassionate and justice-seeking. God bearers like Mary. As we discover this, she writes, we can dismantle the polarities that balance between self-inflation and self-negation. God's spirit empowers us to discern this balance, enabling us to become compassionate justice seekers, justice seeking God bearers, people who live by the great commission striving to love God and to love neighbor as self. It's important to note that suppression of self-love is not what is required, but rather love that is rightly ordered. For only those who love God above all else can love God's creatures, including themselves, as they should. 
As we listen to Mary's song, perhaps we can overhear the good news of God's leveling work within and among us, enabling love of God, love of others, and love of ourselves. And hear God's saying to us what Gabriel the angel said to Mary. If this hope of a savior is to happen, if this hope of a leveling is to happen, it will happen through you, Mary. You will conceive hope by the Holy Spirit. You will carry the seed and give birth to it. You will take responsibility for protecting this child when threatened by powerful forces. You will raise this child to love justice and pay attention to those long overlooked. You will watch as this child matures, ministers, and is then beaten down. And you will sing when he rises again in glory. God seeks to use Mary, God seeks to use us to flip the script, to bring Christ and his ways to life in this community and in this world, to turn the tables of power where they are abused and to brighten a struggling neighbor's spirit, to put a song in their hearts. Like Mary, we may not feel so very important in God's scheme of things, but God calls each of us to carry the seed of hope for the least, for the forgotten, for the unheard. And God looks with favor on our lowly, on our ordinary servanthood. God's plan is unfolding and it includes you. It includes each of us. You and I, we did not parent the historical Jesus of Nazareth, but we carry and must bring forth Christ into the world so that all may sing, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit doth rejoice in Christ my Savior. Amen. Won't you join us in your hymnals? Number 99, My Soul Gives Glory to My God. Yeah. 
Let's pray together and we will conclude with the Lord's Prayer. Eternal God, for whom all people want and search and wait, even when they don't realize it, we cry out today for a living and present word from you. As our season of Advent continues and the day of your coming draws ever nearer, we pray that you would speak to us in the graceful ways you know best. Open our eyes that have been closed by fear and blinded by self-pity, that we may see you even in the anxieties and uncertainties that haunt our days and threaten to overwhelm us like a cloud of darkness. Help us to see that amid the hustle and bustle of this holiday time, you have been, become incarnate, sanctifying the smallest tasks of love, generosity, and kindness that we are enabled by your grace to perform. Bring to all those who are in need the alleviation of their poverty or in need of comfort for their minds and spirits. Enable us to do what we can to help, to share our happiness and our prosperity, to provide a listening ear or a friendly word, to do acts of kindness, but let us not be content so long as conditions exist that foster human despair from generation to generation through the repetition of ignorance, hatred, disease, distrust. We praise and thank you for the good news of this week, of the distribution of the vaccine, of the completion of the election, of the coming together of the plan for a transitional pastor to join us in the new year. Remind us that you are working, always working for our good. We pray that the promise of your birth, that peace, peace shall be on earth, may that soon be fulfilled both in our troubled hearts and in our troubled world. Come to us, Lord, for we need your presence in our lives. We pray especially for those dear to us who are sick or troubled or unsure or near the hour of their death. Comfort, comfort your people and fill every heart with your love. We pray for the world in which you came and which you still are and which you love. Touch us anew with the hope that is the heritage of those who love and trust your promises. Through Jesus Christ, who is the joy of those who are happy and the comfort of those who mourn as we join the world in our family prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Mary spoke the words of faith and became the vessel through which God entered history. Let her words be our own. Let it be to me according to your word. And may the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always.